Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another Emmy Heritage Farms video. Before we get this one started, I'd like to thank everybody that's been making comments on some of our chicken videos, asking for more information. Thanks for all the support, all the emails we've been getting here early about spring chick selection. Uh, we just love all the questions and we, uh, we like all the feedback on what we're doing. Okay, guys, to start this video off today, uh, we're going to be talking about our top five chicken breeds to keep on a homestead for the absolute beginner. These five breeds will be the easiest chickens to take care of. What we're going to include in this with our selection is going to be, these chickens are going to be picked based off their temperament, how well they lay eggs, things of that nature. So let's go ahead and get started. This is something I wanted to talk about anyway. So let's get you started on these top five breeds. Just not going to be reading somebody else's list and talk about what they think we're only going to be talking about the chickens that we've kept or that i've had experience with we're actually going to be speaking from experience only we don't really worry about other people's list we can't judge on what happens at other people's homesteads and chickens uh just what we've dealt with here on our homestead is what we're going to be talking about and you're going to be familiar with most of these breeds and be able to get your hands on them in your local area also i wanted to mention in this video we're going to be talking about color not specifically color but like when we talk about a breed we're going to add the color of the breed in. So if we're talking about uh, cochins, we're specifically going to say the black cochin or the splash cochin. If you have just, let's say, a general overall, like a Wyandotte chicken, a lot of people say the silver laced are always a little more aggressive. Um, and the rare bluer ones are more reclusive and way more friendly and don't have a mean bone in their body. They're both the same breed, but sometimes... Uh, your black chickens will act a little bit different than your yellow chickens in that same breed. So uh, we're always just going to name color. It's in their DNA. That's just how it goes. So we're always going to mention color when we talk about a specific breed. So y'all stay tuned. We're getting it started. And I'm going to shut up blabbing right now. To kick this list off, and this chicken almost did not make it on the list just due to their spunkiness, we're going to go ahead and put it back on the list this year. Uh, we still do have some on our homestead, and it's the Rhode Island Red Chicken. Rhode Island Red uh, is number five on our list. The only reason why I said this chicken probably wouldn't make it on the list, or I wasn't even going to mention it, is because even the girls in the Rhode Island Red breed is spunky. They have a lot of fire. They're also flighty, which is my top reason it's really hard for me to keep them. We like to use Premier One fence, and even though you trim those chickens' wings, uh, they just don't get as fat bottomed as some chickens do. And uh, so no matter how many times you trim their wings, they're still flighty. They can get over the fence. They have that attitude to where they want to know what's on the other side of the fence. They're inquisitive, and they like to explore. That's just the Rhode Island Red. So, But because uh, the hens are such friendly chickens, they lay so many eggs, uh, you can count on them to lay almost all year long. They hardly ever stop laying in the first place. So now let's kick off some stats for you guys on the Red Island Red Chicken. Now, even though I did say the Red Island Reds was really flighty, the females are really friendly. The males, like I said, will fight to the death. They don't mind doing that. Also, they don't mind attacking humans either, but uh, the females are great. We really love them. They're hardy, they're great foragers, and they really do good at free ranging because they're so small. Now, these guys do really good in a mixed flock of chickens. They are small and faster. Um, they're hard to catch if they do get out. They lay a really good amount of eggs. You're going to find different stats on this, but somewhere between 200 and 250 per year. You'll even get more, some less. And they have a pretty decent feed conversion, and all that means is how much food they eat compared to how much soil they can turn. Now, my number four on this list, uh, shockingly, is a breed that is trying to be um, currently saved here in the United States, um, which is, like I said, shocking to me because this is one of the easier chickens to keep. It was one of the first chickens uh, in America on American soil. Uh, we're talking about the Pilgrim Fowl. Now, a lot of you may call these chickens Dominickers um, and Bard Rocks and all kind of stuff, and there's two distinctions that you can tell the difference from a Dominic chicken and a Bard Rock, and it's plain and simple. The first one's by the cone. A Dominic chicken's always going to have a flat rose cone, and uh, Bard Rock's always going to have a raised single cone. That's how you can tell the two apart, because the barn and the feather sometimes is almost identical. 
Now, there are breeders in our area right now offering free trios to people that's willing to keep this breed separate and raise their own chicks and do the same thing, pay it forward, because like I said, they are trying to save this breed. Um, it's becoming more and more rare in the States due to everybody buying other hybrids that lay more eggs. Now for this breed, again, the only reason why it's number four is the males are almost always aggressive toward humans and other roosters. Uh, they will fight to the death also. Uh, so, and the females are pretty much the same way. Uh, they don't have any problem making their way to the top of the pack when it comes to pecking order. Sometimes they can be a little more aggressive than other hens that you have in your homestead. But there's a lot of good things I can also say about this breed. Uh, when we had uh, first moved to this homestead, uh, there was birds around here that wasn't healthy. We got avian flu when we got here. Um, you guys know we have a vaccination video. Uh, and I will say that that was the one breed here that did not have any trouble. They didn't even break out with the flu whatsoever. We did not vaccinate them. Uh, they was just last on the list for everything. And uh, these guys pull through a lot of stuff that other chickens just don't make it through. They're really tough. Uh, due to the fact that they are the first chicken here on American soil. Obviously, they've survived this long. Um, they're a pretty tough breed. I really can't say enough good stuff about them, but I'm going to shut up babbling again, and let's throw up some stats. Now, the females in this breed is friendly toward humans. They're really awesome. They are very, very hardy. This breed can make it through pretty much anything. Tolerant of heat and frost. They're great foragers, and they're really awesome at free-ranging just because of those stripes help them stay a little camouflage. But again, I will say I've never seen a friendly Dominic rooster, to, even towards humans. They do great in a mixed flock, of course. They are a medium-sized breed. Um, you'll get anywhere from 270 to 300 eggs. There's different reports on that, but they lay a lot. And their feed conversion is level 8. These guys are powerhouses for a medium breed. Um, they don't eat as much food because they're great foragers when they're free ranging. Hey guys, and falling in at our number three spot was a toss up between the black Osterlorp and the Jersey Giant Chicken. Um, the only thing I can really tell you the difference in as far as what our favorites are is egg color. We all know those Osterlorps are those deep, dark brown eggs. Um, they're really beautiful to have when you count them with everything else that you get from your chickens. Um, however, we did select the Jersey Giant this time. Uh, this is a big gentle chicken again we've never had uh, any mean roosters as far as uh, being mean to adults or children other birds pretty much a peaceful chicken overall they are big they're not very fast they're not escape artists they don't really care about jumping over a fence or getting out of if they've got their basic needs met they're pretty content and don't really care about getting out and exploring that much uh, and again they're really big and can't fly over fences even when their wings aren't trimmed they're just too big to do so so it's a good thing they're not really aggressive because they really are big birds so most everybody on the homestead loves a jersey giant chicken and we mostly just keep the hens we don't breed them here you guys that do follow us along know we add black chickens in our flock to help deter the hawks um i'll post a link to that video at the end here um, so I'll just go ahead again and shut up babbling and we'll throw up some stats about this chicken and go in to a little more detail Okay, so the male and female in this breed is much more friendly than uh, the last two previous we've been talking about uh, Males and females both are great and this breed is mildly hardy um, They're not as hardy as the last two we've talked about they do okay at foraging, but they're a little big I uh, can't get away from predators that good. So they're mild free-ranging also and um, they are the largest U.S. chicken. Um, they can get up to 20 pounds. It's been reported. These birds are really big. Um, they are big and slower. That is a downside. They do lay around 200 eggs per year. And uh, these guys are really big. They're also powerhouses. And they can really till up your garden and stuff. So they got a level 8 for the feed conversion. Okay, so there we are. Now we're down to number 2. And number 2 slot is the wind up. Now specifically the blue laced red wine dot. Um, these chickens are big. They are pretty big. To me they are a large breed. Um, they're not very fast chickens. They're not aggressive at all. We've not even really had any aggressive blue laced red wine dot roosters towards humans specifically. Um, they do okay with males. 
and the other roosters in the coop with them once they get uh, dominance established over the top rooster. It's pretty peaceful, believe it or not. Um, they don't carry on and just keep fighting to the death like most roosters. Um, they'll pretty much fix the squabble and it'll be over with with any bloodshed or lost feathers most of the time. Uh, the hens are pretty big. Uh, they're pretty productive layers. Um, these guys are powerhouses. They can till a garden in no time. They move a lot more dirt and compost around because they're just bigger and stronger. And uh, overall, just a great chicken to have. They can go broody. They're good moms, but at the same time, it's not common that they do so. And um, So let's go ahead and show you guys some stats on this chicken. And then we'll go on to our number one spot. And you guys probably already know what it is. Okay, so now this breed uh, is very friendly, male and female. I mean, a five-year-old could raise this breed. Um, they are very hardy. They're they're good foragers, and um, they're okay free range. They're just a little big um, as far as uh, getting as much food to help feed their bigger bodies. It would just take them a little bit more time, but they do pretty good free ranging. Um, they're not the best for mixed flocks just because they like to be around chickens of their own flock. Um, they are big and slower, which is just a little bit of a downside as far as free ranging goes, but they do a great 220 eggs per year, and they are powerhouses. They're one of our top ones when it comes to letting them till up the garden, fertilizing, uh, and how much food they eat. So now here we are at the very end, and you guys are probably wondering what our number one selection would be. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and tell you now it was a really easy pick for us because um, the breed that I'm picking now is a heritage breed. Um, it's what we created our very own breed off of, the Midas Golds. And we're really proud of that breed. It's done amazing for us the past nine years. Not everybody's big on crossbreeds and hybrids and things of that nature. So we'll go back to the natural selection of this bird. And as you guys already know, it's the Buff Orpington. So this selection, like I said, was easy for us. This is the number one most friendly chicken on our homestead. Um, when anybody goes out to where the coop is at or where we have our premier one mobile fence out in the pasture somewhere that's the first bird that will come up and greet them including the kids uh, a lot of times when you walk up on them they'll just lay down and submit they want you to pick them up sometimes they walk up on your feet um, these chickens lay a awesome amount of eggs a year especially our hybrid breed of this Orpington the Midas Gold around 330 eggs a year um, Normally the Orpington will hit somewhere between 280 to 300. They are a really big breed. To me, they're not an extra large breed, of course, but they are a large breed. Uh, these chickens can get pretty big. Even the hens look as big as some normal heritage breed roosters. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut up bragging about this breed and we'll go ahead and throw up some stats for you guys. Okay guys, same as the last breed, males and females of the Orpingtons are very, very friendly. They're also hardy very hardy uh, they can pretty much withstand anything um, including crucial summers they're awesome foragers which makes them great at free ranging uh, even though they're a bright yellow color they can hold their own um, they're pretty quick um, they do really good in mixed flocks they accept other chickens pretty well they are a big breed but like I stated before they are fast um, you're going to get a lot of reports on eggs anywhere from 280 to 300 and these guys are super awesome at another level 10 um, for converting dirt and tilling stuff over to the food that we feed them. All right, everybody, there you have it. There is our top five easiest chickens to raise for beginner homesteaders or beginner chicken keepers. You can't go wrong with those five. Um, if you have any of these breeds and experienced anything different, let us know in the comments below. Uh, we all know everything's different on everybody's homestead. We'll bring you more videos like this and more chicken content in the future. So thank you guys for watching. As always, we'll see you on the next one.